Hello there, my name is Nate, and welcome to the Gamers Guild, where today I'm going to be tackling the topic of what miniatures in the new Marvel Crisis Protocol are really easy to paint, and which ones are a little bit more difficult. Uh, now, for those who have been painting for even just a year at this point, this video may not necessarily be for you. Uh, this is more so geared toward the people who are picking up Marvel Crisis Protocol as their first miniatures game, as is very likely for some of you as it's a new core box leading into a big IP, and so this might be your first time building, painting, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so go ahead and throw out a disclaimer, this is not a how to paint video, this is not going to teach you any techniques or anything like that, this is much more so just going to be a video about why some of these models are going to be a little bit easier to paint and which ones I recommend starting out with as far as picking the miniature and making reasons as to why it itself is easier to paint. Uh, so I'm going to go through all the core box models uh, with some of the easier ones, then some of the middle, middle difficulty ones, uh, landing on some of the ones that I would personally save for last if you were painting the core set. Now, all of this can also be thrown out the window if you just want to paint your favorite character and get them on the table as quickly as possible. Uh, it's also a really cool thing to be able to look back over your miniatures and see the journey that you've come on. Uh, even for me just now, being able to look at the Iron Man that I've painted up so far versus my corset Iron Man is a really cool comparison. So, with that said, let's uh, get into this. Uh, when I'm talking about easy to paint miniatures, one of the things that I'm really looking at is open poses. So if you see here on Winter Soldier, who I still haven't even primed yet because I want to uh, get some more materials out for his base, uh, you can see that there's nothing really hiding any of the details on this miniature. Uh, so the back here is wide open, the chest area is wide open, there's maybe a little bit of hidden depth there, but unless you've got somebody just doing like a Da Vinci pose, there's not going to be a completely open miniature. So with that said, these are the kind of things that I would be looking for as a miniature painter uh, as far as finding something that is easier to paint. So with that said, uh, the f earliest models that I would say are on the easy to paint scale are going to be Winter Soldier because he has a very nice open pose without any major concerns. He does have a few different details that you'll need to go through and pick out to really make the most of the sculpt. but. Dallas and the, the creative team at AMG have done a really good job with adding a lot of depth to the lines on his arm, uh, so it's easier to pick out those kind of details. Along with that, uh, my Black Widow is going to be easier than most since there's not even an Ultron drone on there, uh, but again, just a very open pose, no real details on her that need picking out aside from her belt, bracelets, and then her little uh, baton sticks. Uh, also among the easiest is going to be the new Ultron. Uh, especially, I mean, if you know, cape or no cape, he's going to be very easy to pick out the details you need to pick out on him. His cape, instead of being down and kind of across the back of his body, which is how most capes are, uh, it's wide open, so it's very easy to get in there with a brush without any issues and reaching all of those kind of spots. Uh, the final ones that I will mention on the very easy list is normal Captain Marvel, especially if you go for the short hair version, but either way, it's still a pretty open pose. There's a couple details on her boot that might be a little bit more difficult, but nothing crazy overlapping uh, that's going to be in different colors. And then Iron Man, who I've actually got a little bit of paint on. Uh, he's not quite done yet. I'm waiting for a, a, a more pale yellow to come in to mix with the uh, golds that I have in here already. Uh, but he's got just a little bit of a difficult to reach spot, but otherwise is a very open sculpt. None of the different colors are in terribly hard to reach paces except for uh, <coughs> some of his little uh, hinges in the arms and stuff. Getting into some of the more medium tier ones, we have characters like Red Skull. Uh, Red Skull is mostly very open. His chest is a wide open area, so there's no difficulties there. Back very much the same. The only difficult thing is getting in under here, under the cape, or his uh, trench coat, and getting all of that. But it's going to be one solid color, and there's not a lot of highlighting that you have to worry about, either on the back of his legs, 
or on the uh, trench coat itself, so there's not too much of a uh, concern as far as the difficulty in getting him all painted up. Uh, similarly, Baron Zemo, we start to get a couple characters with some stuff across their chest area. So the sword is very thin, it'll be easy to pick around, uh, but maybe just save that uh, sword for painting last. That way you don't have to worry about getting it messy in the meantime, but otherwise still a pretty open sculpt. Uh, the last two in this kind of medium tier in my opinion, we've got uh, the new crossbones whose sculpt might be one of my favorites, because I love the characters that are able to be very static in their pose, but still be uh, very cool looking and intimidating and true to the nature. Uh, so this one's a little bit difficult because he's got both his arms in front of his chest, the strap for his gun is in front of his chest, and then the gun itself is going to be just a little bit of a pain to try to paint around and stuff. Mighty Steve is probably on the lower end of the difficulty scale for a bunch of these guys, but being able to just go in and get the back end of the shield is going to be a little bit difficult in some places, <coughs> as well as picking out details back here on the uh, arm that's kind of shadowed down there. You probably won't have to worry about too many highlights back there, thankfully, but still some details that are a little bit more problematic. So those are the guys that I would knock out in the middle, and then we have the ones that are going to be a little bit more difficult. Uh, first up is Binary Captain Marvel. Uh, a fantastic sculpt, really cool, but because she has so many different colors going on, uh, especially up here in the chest area and the arms with her little sash ribbon thing going on, uh, she's got a lot of colors going on. The blast effect itself I don't think is going to be difficult. Uh, for anybody to tackle, especially because at the end of the day, you paint it how you want to paint it, and blast effects are actually surprisingly easy to get away with as long as you're using similar colors that match a blast pattern. Uh, but just getting in there on the details of her hand and arm uh, and her leg while the sash is a different color is going to be a little bit more of a pain and take some patience to really get in on with a paintbrush. Then we have the good Dr. Octavius, who really for the most part is quite open in the front area and is going to be really easy even to get to his trench coat for the most part except uh, back there, so recommend hitting that before you hit his legs. But then in the back is where it gets a little bit more difficult as you want to pick out some of those highlights along the edges of his cape and there's some tentacles in the way. Uh, that said, it's also not one that I think is worth trying to uh, paint separated, separated, there's a better term for that and I don't remember what it is off the top of my head, uh, but it keeps him very stable with the three legs that he has on the ground, so I'd highly recommend still building him fully and then painting him up, uh, but just a little word of caution that it's going to be uh, annoying, maybe get the legs done uh, last similar to Zemo and his sword. Then I have the Ultron Grunts, uh, because this one I did do in uh, partial assemblies. Uh, if you built them all, good luck getting all the little details in. And even then, good luck getting all the little uh, details in on all the different drones. Uh, but I would just uh, paint them separate from each other and get them done. Because separate, it's much easier, and really it's just something as simple as... Uh, you could even just prime them silver, give them a good wash, and then go in and pick out some uh, glowy bits. But otherwise, the Ultron drones won't be too complicated. Just, again, requires a little bit of extra patience. <clears throat> uh, the character that I think a lot of people are going to want to paint first, but is also going to be one of the more difficult ones, is this new Spider-Man. Which, in itself, is not a bad thing. It means he's got a really cool pose... Uh, especially if you kept the uh, the symbiote stuff on, though, it's going to be a little bit more difficult because he has multiple uh, things kind of weaving over, and it can make it more difficult to get your paintbrush in at the angles you want. Uh, so for this one, even with his webbing, uh, it can be kind of pushed to the side to go in and get the uh, red in on his glove really quick, and then it's just going to come back and set on that. Uh, so for me personally, I'm going to probably paint all of Spider-Man, paint the light pole, and then come back and do the webbing as the very last thing, 
uh, as it'll be white, uh, so it's going to get messy anyway, and it's going to be very hard to just not worry about that until the very end. Uh, but otherwise, I think he's kind of just a more difficult model to paint because, again, the symbiote tendrils kind of coming up and encasing him uh, means there's less angles for your paintbrush to get at him. Uh, the light post presents a similar problem, but not nearly as bad, and he also still has that webbing there. Again, not terrible, but it does limit the angles that your paintbrush is going to come in at. But that is all I have for you guys today. I hope you're enjoying your own core sets and getting them built and painted up. Uh, I want to give shout outs to all the members of the Guild Hall Patreon who are supporting this channel and what we're doing. It is because of supporters like that that I'm able to get a better camera that can show details of models a lot better than the one I had even just a couple of weeks ago as I continue to get more things set up here. So a sincere thank you to the, uh, for the support of all those people. Uh, as well as thank you to the sponsors, Tritex over in the UK. Uh, you can use the code TritexGGCB5 at checkout for an extra 5% off of any of their already discounted prices on Marvel Crisis Protocol products. And then if you're in the US, uh, shopping at GameChefs.org, use the code GamersGuild, no spaces or anything else, and it gets you an extra 15% off of their already discounted prices, which is really good. Uh, all that as well, uh, they both do giveaways for this channel, uh, which is just a way to support this awesome community who has been supporting uh, me and the podcast guys and everything. And from the latest drawing from Game Chef's uh, contest uh, for the Mighty Core Box, uh, Brett Freeman from Pennsylvania uh, has won, so thank you for supporting both us and Game Chef's. It's a... Uh, awesome of you to do that and we're uh, sending a mighty core box your way uh, also game chefs will be in contact with you shortly to get that taken care of uh, thank you all for watching and until next time keep on gaming